We have a load of new Call of Duty 2024 Black Ops Gulf War Zombies information to go over. Once again, the other day I posted a load of gameplay details that we learnt, and following on from that video, we have learnt even more information, mainly regarding the different system mechanics and craftable mechanics that are within the mode. So, essentially this mode is going to work very similar to what we've seen in Cold War Zombies, Vanguard and Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, however, they are changing it. So apparently this is how it's going to work, now this is all coming from the fact of the game, so is of course subject to change and or misinformation slash misinterpretation, so bear that in mind. But nevertheless, Perk Machines and Do Wonder Fizz are once again returning, and apparently there's absolutely no changes from Cold War. So far, all of the perks found in the files are all of the ones, the 10 ones that we had in Cold War Zombies. We have no word on if any other perks are coming, unfortunately. It doesn't mean none are coming, it's just that none have been found thus far, so don't take it as any indication that there are no new perks. I'm really hoping that we get some new ones and we still don't even know how they're going to work are they going to have tier upgrades similar to what you could do out of game in cold war zombies with the crystals is there going to be some sort of different upgrade system we're not entirely sure just yet now the pack a punch is going to work again it's similar to cold war zombies where you will upgrade your weapons firepower as well as being able to equip various different elemental ammo mods however apparently of course like i've talked about in prior videos they are bringing back the pack a punch knuckle cracking animation so you're not going to be able to instantly just go in and out of the pack a punch. Now, it's unclear if there's still going to be a menu that will pop up where you'll then be able to attach which different ammo mod you want and which different pack a punch tier you want, assuming there's going to be three again, or whether it's just going to automatically do it and then if you continue upgrading, give you a random ammo mod, similar to how it was in Black Ops 3 Zombies. We're not exactly sure because if they have a menu that pops up but then they still have the knuckle crack animation, surely that's a bit too much. It just kind of overcomplicates the process, so you kind of need one or the other, in my opinion. I mean, in Cold War Zombies, they remove removed that knuckle crack animation for that reason, so you could jump in and out of that menu without it becoming a bit too clunky. The next thing is that a new craftable system is going to be coming, which is apparently going to be a tool grinder, which will essentially just allow you to increase your loadout weapon's damage potential. Now, in Cold War Zombies, you of course went to the armor machine, and this would allow you to, of course, equip your different armor levels, but then it would also allow you to increase your weapon's damage potential, your weapon tier, because, of course, Cold War Zombies changed changed it where there wasn't just one upgrade system. You could either upgrade your weapon's rarity or the Pack-a-Punch tier. Both were an option there. And then they removed that in Vanguard where when you would Pack-a-Punch it would also just be one and the same as your weapon tier. And then they changed it back to how it was in Cold War for Modern Warfare 3. Of course, with different Pack-a-Punch tiers being separated in the different zones though, instead of just one Pack-a-Punch where you can do different tiers. And I'm wondering how it's going to work in COD 2024 Zombies because are they going to have three different Pack-a-Punch tiers, separate machines for each of the tiers, like in Modern Warfare 3. I'd assume not. I'm assuming they're just going to have one, like it was in Cold War, and then have the different tiers that you manually have to siphon through on the menu. So for clarity, it's going to be just like Cold War Zombies. They're just separating the armor upgrade station and the weapon upgrade station into two separate mechanics. So there's still going to be an arsenal, which will allow you to craft, upgrade, and repair armor for damage reduction. And then you also have the crafting table that we've had in all the recent games, which will allow you to craft very different gear, equipment, and score streaks to assist you in survival. So yeah, exactly like Cold War Zombies, they're just dividing that machine into two separate ones. So don't get confused there. Now some other things that have been found is the Ray Guns model has been found in the files of the game. Now we already obviously knew it was returning. I mean, Vanguard was the only one that didn't launch with it. Treyarch Zombies experience that is. And apparently the Jet Gun's going to be back as well, so there might be some sort of transit remake. That's an old leak we already had, and I'll come on to that again in a little bit, because that could tie into something I want to discuss. The next thing is there is once again going to be a radio pack that you'll have to go to to signal an exfil within the game. So it's not going to be like Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, which was obvious anyways, where there's a manual exfil after the 60 minute countdown. You have a choice to call it in on round 5, 10, etc. Around about. We've also gotten a zombie model from Gulf War Zombies. There's not really too much to make out here, but they don't have any clothing on at all. I don't know if that's going to stay the same when it actually releases, but yeah, it's just a basic zombie model. I kind of like that naked zombie model, to be honest. Just has that sort of raw aspect to it. But yeah, it does seem like the Wonder Fizz, the crafting table, and all of these machines are going to look exactly like how they did in Cold War Zombies and how they have in the recent games, apart from Vanguard, of course. Well, the uh, pack a bunch looked the same in that game anyways, which didn't really make much sense. But yeah, that's staying the same. We've learned more information about the Vanguard teleport returning. Again, it seems like there might be a hub section, but this could be for some sort of outbreak mode that's separate to round base. I talked more about that in that past video, so don't get too worried. We could be misinterpreting this in the code. It might not be like Vanguard, where there is a hub 
and then you teleport to different sections. They might just be reusing this teleporter and it could just be, for example, going from the spawn to the main map or they're going to have round based and some sort of open world outbreak experience at the same time. Now, this is unrelated to recent leaks, but recently a very talented concept artist called Robert has been making various different designs for fan art for different menus for COD 2024 Zombies. And I've seen some people posting about this thinking that these are indeed legitimate and it's a legitimate leak, but these are not. These are just fan made to give you an idea of what the menus might look like in COD 2024 Zombies, but this is not a leak. Now, he's made concepts for like a World of War pack and a bunch of remasters for quote unquote Zombies Chronicles 2, but yeah, like I said, this is not a leak. You can see they're just using the Zombie Siege menu background from COD Mobile Zombies. It does look very cool though. He is very talented and has made some awesome designs, but yeah, I just want to specify that this isn't indeed real. However, it brings me on to the next topic I want to discuss because like I mentioned before, regarding remade maps, the jet gun's been found in the files and it seems like maybe the West Virginia town map that I've talked about in prior videos may potentially be some sort of transit remake since the jet gun is in the files. Maybe the section from town. Now here's the interesting thing because apparently we're going to be getting two Call of Duty games back to back with the 90s game this year in 2024 and then we're going to be getting a Black Ops 2 sequel apparently the following year in 2025 which is apparently going to feature round based zombies as well and this is going to be set around 2030 canonically in the game and I'm guessing this game in terms of zombies since it will probably be slightly tied into the campaign but it may be set in 2030 similarly and maybe it'll just continue directly on from wherever the storyline concludes in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies because otherwise we would get this 90s game which will then conclude where we know the Requiem heads get their lives sucked out of them by this Ethereum device and seemingly perish but then there might be a massive time jump to then after Modern Warfare 3 Zombies and I don't know maybe at the end of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies for example we managed to successfully revive Requiem and then they could continue being characters in 2030 and that could be a good way to explain how they've survived all of that time since we already know that Ravenov has not aged properly and he looks so good for his age even though he's supposed to be in his 70s so Ethereum's been having very good youth effects then this means we're getting two years of round-based zombies and this means that some people have been ruling out the potential of us seeing a load of remade or remastered maps essentially Zombies Chronicles 2 now I know of course if they do make some sort of Zombies Chronicles 2 they're probably not going to charge for it it's probably just going to be regular content releases this time around but it means that if they do bring back maps in COD 2024 they can transfer between COD 2024 and 2025 because I've been thinking a lot how are they going to do two years of RAM based in two separate games it's really annoying just having us just focusing on one game and then moving on to that next game a year later but like we've seen with Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 back to back because Call of Duty is now using a unified engine a unified COD HQ a hub it means that content is easily transferable between the games so they brought a load of the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maps over to Modern Warfare 3 very seamlessly for example and they're exactly the same they're pretty much one to one ported and they can potentially do this for the zombies maps as well and I haven't seen enough people talking about it what it means is that the maps for COD 2024 may transfer between COD 2024 and 2025 similar to what they've done with the multiplayer maps now this is not confirmed they may not do this but I think this is the smart way to do it because I think some people will be annoyed with the fact that you know for example COD 2024 zombies could be amazing however then suddenly we're just jumping onto COD 2025 zombies and then we're forgetting about that game entirely and also another concern is we may see a similar thing to what's happened with Modern Warfare 3 zombies where a bunch of the Trek developers have had to move off of that project because they're now working on finishing up COD 2024 zombies well if a similar thing happens with COD 2024 and 2025 zombies then it could mean that it can disrupt the post-launch content however if the content transfers between the two modes instead of us getting a hard reset on zombies when COD 2025 swings around maybe there's going to be progression carryover similar to what we've been getting in multiplayer maybe maps are going to transfer over too maybe the gameplay systems might be somewhat different but the maps might actually be able to transfer over so like I said if they do remake maps they can easily transfer between the two games and maybe let's say for example we get a few remade maps in the first year in COD 2024 but then a few more in the next year they can all be accessible from one application one game as opposed to them being locked between the games because for example if we look back at Black Ops 3 Zombies we had Zombies Chronicles and wouldn't it have been fantastic if all of those maps could just be transferred over to Cold War Zombies and you can play them all with those gameplay systems because I assume COD 2024 and 2025 Zombies whilst they may have somewhat similar gameplay systems I assume they're going to be somewhat different because they need to be otherwise what's the selling factor for buying COD 2025 Zombies if you already own 2024 Zombies if they're exactly the same so maybe they're going to have very different systems between the two games 
games, but if that's going to be the case, wouldn't it be awesome if the maps transfer between the two games and you can then choose which gameplay systems you want to play them on? And there may be some sort of leveling as well that transfers between the two. Let me know what you think of that idea in the comment section down below. This is something I definitely haven't seen enough people talking about, and I would love for them to bring back a load of classic Zombies maps, even all of the ones from the original Zombies Chronicles, and they just transfer between these two games. I mean, they can even bring back Black Ops 3 maps like Shadows of Evil and Dragon Drag because it has been so long since that game released, even though it feels like yesterday. And considering that Treyarch have to make two RAM-based Zombies experiences back to back, it would make sense for them to bring back a load of past maps in an effort to ensure that there's enough content for both games over their lifespans, because yes, of course, new content is always better, but I think it's good to have a mix. There's no reason they can't. As long as we get enough new content, bringing back old content is still fine. And I'm sure over a full two year span, we'll get plenty of new RAM based experiences, even if they do end up bringing some back. And again, that's just speculation. I don't know if they exactly are, but it's just kind of my guess here. So let me know what you think of all of this in the comment section down below as always. But anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.